I, I tell you what, when, when these two guys give me an opportunity to talk about them, I'm going to jump at it. And the beautiful thing about it is they give me a lot of opportunity to do that. But before we get to them, let's go back to a board here and take a look at some other middle guys. And it's kind of interesting as this kind of goes down the wayside because these were all drafted guys by their team. And they came up and they played together. And I think that these guys, through the course of this seven-year contract, if it plays out right, both came via free agent. I think that's pretty interesting. One more thing, I will say this. These were some of my favorite guys to play against and watch. And I'll go even one step further. This guy, Alan Trammell, playing shortstop. When I was 19 years old and I was in, my, in between my off season and going to instructional league, my brother said to me, the Tigers were in town to Baltimore playing the Orioles. He said, look, I know you're gonna go hang out with your buddies, drink beer in the right field stands. He was right. <laughs> he goes, but do me a favor. Watch this dude play shortstop a couple innings. Don't watch me. I do things a little bit different. This is the dude I want you to watch for the future because he's really fundamental sound. Now, just uh, go back and show a little video of these guys doing their thing back in the day. Like I said, they were uh, drafted, right? So here's Blouser, Lemke, turn a double play. That was nice and quick, by the way. No question about that. Robinson Cano, Derek Jeter. It's fun to go back and see these dudes doing their thing, but there's there's a success rate that these guys had playing. Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley, that's nice to watch. And then we're gonna go to the two that I talked about. Alan Trammell and Sweet Lou Whitaker, an awful lot of fun to watch. Now, let's get back into this and let's just love what's going on with these two guys as they turn into a little easy double play as well. But I love watching them offensively. Get after it. And we're just gonna see a nice little rip of 27 home runs. One with 13, one with 14, they're getting it done. There's some controlled violence out of Simeon swing right here. He can get this stuff quick, but a lot of these balls are yelling, hit me, by the way. <laughs> and they're just obliging as this thing goes. Keep that frozen, Lisa. That's fine right there where it is. I believe in these cases last night, because both these guys hit home runs last night, both of them hit it on first pitch. There's no count in here. And I think these guys are so good at being able to cover out here that even if they get rushed, they react to it slightly different because we're going to try to go out here. This ball is going to crowd them. Watch Simeon get to this thing in a hurry. Play it, please. Oh, my goodness. So now let's just enjoy Corey Seager and what he's able to do. Hitting an awful lot of balls. He's a first pitch attack man, too. Doesn't matter. Sometimes lefty throwing him breaking ball, lefty try to rush him. He's going to get him, and he's hitting a lot of balls to the big part of the field. I know he's a pull hitter. Keep it frozen, Lisa. Thank you. Once again, first pitch, just like Simeon. And I don't know necessarily what they're designed to do here with this target right down Broadway. But that's dangerous when you're throwing it to a first pitch. I think they rush him a little bit in here, and he very subtly gets the barrel to it, too. And, and not only that, he's taking this ball in the inner part of the plate, He's going almost dead central. You can't teach it. I'm sorry. Play this, please. He's going to get crowded a bit. That's 99. Now, what I want to look at this is they do it two different ways. So freeze that for me, Lisa, and I know it's moving slow, so we're not going to miss this. Simeon did some things that I think my brother did when the ball crowded him. He's going to shorten the lever and bring his hands in here and still pull the baseball. And I want to watch this because right in here somewhere there's going to be an emergency hack. But watch his hands and then watch where the barrel gets and he goes, get on out of here. Play that thing through, Lisa, and we'll watch that. That's the thing where I think he's looking away and then he crowds him. But when he starts to fire his hands, he pulls his hands in. And then look at the barrel get through. His hands almost stay. And he just spins right around it and goes bridge. Seeger, on the other hand, freeze that for me, Lisa. You're going to see a little bit of a difference because I think he really pulls that bat head or the bat knob through, and his hands are going to get extended, and he's still going to go center. Play that. And it's tough to see when you're doing slow motion things, even when it's that slow, but when you put these guys up side by side and show you what I mean by the difference, look at where his hands were. Very similar pitch down and in. This one's the same way. But look how far Seager's hands are out there. It's just a little bit different of an attack. But what's cool about it and what's real about it 
Both of these dudes know where that is. Where the sweet spot is on their bat, they just kind of got to it in two different ways. But I love the way this dude attacked it right there because it did remind me of watching my brother hit some inside fastballs for homers. This guy right here is just an absolute beast right now. But I love the fact if these guys can both stay on the field together and he can stay there through the seven years and get it done, he's going to go on a pretty good list of shortstops.